Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here on a beautiful 60 degree and sunny Friday morning. Yeah, it's still morning for another 20 minutes. Excitement, why? Because delivery. I got delivery confirmation that the new toys that I've been waiting for have come in. What did I get, you ask? I'll show you in a minute. But for now, let's go get toys. Okay, kids, I can't do this really on cam, obviously, because I cut out my uh, overhead setup, but here's what I'm getting. Bang! The Sony A7R3. But that's not it. The Sony VG C3EM, which is the grip for the Sony A7R3. Yes, I have now pared my lenses down to almost all zooms. Well, I'll tell you why I say almost. So I got rid of every Sigma lens that I've ever bought, not because they were bad, but because I wanted all Sony lenses. Eventually I figured that out, especially once I got this a7 IV because of the breathing, the, like the focus breathing compensation. Now, most of the times, if not all the time, now I have this 16 to 35 f2.8 g master on here for filming it'll pretty much stay that way with the exception of the one lens that i just purchased last night from somebody on a facebook group and that is the sony 35 millimeter f1.4 g master now i'm revealing that because okay whatever that should be here next week but i basically sold my sigma 105 f1.4 the sony 40 millimeter and the sony 20 millimeter to get this A7R3, and then I just bought the grip because I wanted a grip. I already have all the stuff, and I told you earlier, I've been talking about, oh, I got new toys, I got all the accessories for the toys. So in anticipation of getting the camera, I also got screen protector, a new bigger eye cup, small rig cage for when I don't have the grip on it, small rig cage for when I do have the grip on it. I haven't decided if I wanna keep the grip on here all the time, most of the time, and this is like going back to when I shot Canon, even when I had my 20D, my 40D, my 6D, I had a grip for the camera. I like having that big weight to balance out any lenses, especially because back then my go-to walk around lens was a 70 to 200 L lens. So now that I have basically all these big ass zoom lenses, with the exception of the 35 that's coming, I thought to myself, maybe I'll just get the cage and have it on here for having a grip. That way I've got plenty of battery life, blah, blah, blah. But then I also thought to myself, you know, maybe I don't wanna lug that big ass camera around. I mean, I know how it is when I'm carrying the A7R4, but the R4 has now basically, I don't wanna say relegated, but I'm pretty much exclusively using the A7R4 for birding. So that sits over there and that has the 200 to 600 on it. And I don't see any reason to change that. The reason it is so awesome for birding is because sometimes you just can't get that close to birds or wildlife and everything. And having that 61 megapixels and being able to zoom in on it, or even just going into APS-C mode, and that takes me to 26 megapixels. So it's still more than, than you know the, the average 24 megapixel camera sensor. I have found that keeping it in 61 megapixels and then just zooming in post does wonders for me and it works perfectly. And since it works so well for that, I thought, okay, great. What it is a little bit overkill for, and what I used to say all along is, why the hell would you get something that was 61 megapixels? Well, back then, I was only shooting people and walk around like street photography. That I don't think you need 61 megapixels for. So back then when I said, who the hell needs that? I never thought ahead to the fact that I was going to become a birding wildlife photographer and that it is perfect for that. In fact, I was just talking to Yankee Cowboy, and I even said, even if somebody straight up offered a straight trade for my A7R4 and they would give me an A1, I wouldn't do the deal. That's how much I love that camera and how perfect it is for what I do. But again, it's not great for my walk around camera, you know, where I'm out just shooting whatever. And I thought to myself, you know what? I really do like the R series for stills because that R, four was great and i originally when i first got into sony i had the r2 now that one had a bunch of issues with it that i didn't like so i didn't really like that camera i liked the images that i got with it but as far as flow goes it was a no-go for me but now 
since I know I love the R4, I thought the R3 would be perfect. And in hindsight, if I had gone back to when I bought that R2, it was because the Best Buy guy talked me out of the R3 and talked me into the R2 and said, oh yeah, the money that you can save, you know, I mean, it's still got the same resolution, you know, no big deal. Yeah, well, he didn't talk about the shitty card slot. He didn't talk about the shitty battery life, you know, the ergonomics and all that kind of stuff. So blah, 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 R3. So yes, I've got this. All my batteries are already charged up. I'm going to take this apart, put it together, and I'm going to go out and have some fun. So let's do that now. Okay. Lots of people down here walking. Not too many people out here beaching, which is understandable because, like I said, when the wind kicks up, it is fairly chilly. You can see the waves. Dumb monkey should have brought his damn glasses so that he had some sunglasses. It is just blinding down here, and I forget that because of the cement and the, and the sand and everything and being no shade whatsoever. So this is, this is hurting. But I'm not going to be here very long, so that's okay. You want one? You can have one. You want to pose? <laughs> Well, that was a successful trip, despite the fact that I'm like partially blinded from walking around on the boardwalk without sunglasses and the broom of my hat didn't do shit. I guess it probably did because I would have been blind quicker, but remember that kids, gotta protect your eyes. So anyways, I went down just for a little bit. I walked a couple blocks along the boardwalk and then walked back up. I got some good pics of the fun park and uh, you know some good pictures on the boardwalk enough to test this out and realize that it's awesome one thing i'm finding though and i'll have to look around for this tonight is that it seems to me that the exposure i, I don't know if i'm if i'm looking at it wrong or if i'm doing something wrong or if i got the screen set incorrectly but when the screen or the viewfinder tells me that the exposure is correct like right at zero it looks really overexposed to me. And the first picture out of any camera that I take or any like phone or whatever is always of my wife. And I was taking the picture and she was like, dude, what's up? You know, because I was hesitating. I took the picture and then it, I took the picture according to what I thought looked right. And then I took the picture according to what the camera told me was right. And it looked completely overexposed. So I showed her and she's like, dude, that's way blown out. What the hell? So. Now what I've done is if I'm looking at this, I think, you know, and even just taking a picture of the setup right in here, I'll show you the both pictures. For instance, this one shows what the camera says is the correct exposure. Now, if you look at this one where I put it to uh, plus one, this is what I think looks like the correct exposure. I don't know. What do you think? tell me. I mean, either way, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't matter as long as I, I mean, as I play with this more and I get used to the nuances of it, I'll know that I really can't go by the meter on here or I can go by the meter, but I know I have to, I have to add a stop because it blows everything out. But other than that, I mean, is this heavy? Yeah, it's just the way I like it. And you know, I, I decided to go with the 2470 instead of the 70 to 200, just thinking that it would be a little bit better for what I wanted to go out and capture today. But tomorrow, I'm going to throw on the 70 to 200 version 2. Of course, that's what I have now. And I'm going to play with this thing and I'm going to see, you know, how, how I feel about it. Because that lens is so much lighter than version 1, which is what I was used to. And I think version 1 of the Sony 70 to 200 was pretty comparable to the first version of the Canon 70 to 200 L lens that I had. You know, they were both pretty big and also my Canon cameras were, were probably like this, you know, when, when I add the grip and then I put on the cage and everything. But back then, I, cages didn't exist in my world. But I like this. I like having the extra metal on, on every side and almost like little shelves. So if I want to like hook my finger in here, you know, I use this one right here. That's, it's actually like relocating the, the hot shoe. So it's like a cold shoe and it's got this little indent. I find that my thumb 
goes in there perfectly to give me even better of a grip, like more substantiated grip, and I kind of dig that. So obviously I'm in my garage studio. I have the garage door open, as you can hear, the construction and the birds and all that shit. I'm surprised there aren't jets flying over because I want to film, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting natural light, a lot of natural light because it's reflecting off the buildings across the street. But then I turned my SL60 actually from 15% all the way up to 50 percent to try to bring in more light on this side so again so i don't have that every breath you take split lighting where it's all dark on this side and light on this side but i didn't want to get crazy and turn it up to 100 percent and, and be blinded in my own garage it's been a hell of a week well it's been a hell of a couple of weeks M maybe a hell of a three weeks the bottom line is new toys assembled so i got the a7 r3a which has the better screen in evf and I got the grip. I put the screensaver or screensaver, the screen protector on, the new eye cup. I also put the cage that is for the camera with the grip on. And eventually I'll get my 256 gig V90 card back from, from my friend Josh. And, um, and then I'll put that in here because this only has one UHS-2 slot. And I wanted to have the ability to be faster when I'm reading it. And the ability to, to put more shots on here at once. Not that I'm going to take over a thousand shots in, in one sitting, but I have the card. I might as well use it. Now I've moved to all G Masters with the exception of the 200 to 600 because that's, they don't make it in G Master. It's only in a G. So that pretty much finishes out my, my lens collection because I always wanted, you know, I told you I always wanted to have the, the Holy Trinity. And back then I had two of the three, I had a 24 to 70 to 70 to 200. And then I had one prime. I had a 50 millimeter 1.4 when I shot in Canon. So now I have the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, the 70 to 200, all G masters for, to complete out that Holy Trinity. Plus I have the 200 to 600 for birding. And then instead of going with a 50, for my one prime, I went with 35 because I think 35 is a little bit more in line with my flow than the 50 was. So that's it. Once I get that lens on Monday, I will have built the ultimate setup for me and I couldn't be happier about it. So I really enjoyed going out taking pictures today with this new camera. I'm excited that I got it so fast. Hell yeah. Kudos, thumbs up to MPB. They were fantastic from the beginning to the end. I got my stuff really quick. It's all in perfect, like new condition. Everything is fantastic. So that's all I've got for you today. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.